Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you consider yourself an audiophile, hi-fi enthusiast, music lover, music junkie, you name it, welcome home, my friend. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. That way you know when the next video drops. I am thrilled to announce that today is the day. It has been a long time coming and I am going to now reveal all of the secrets, all of the tricks, all of the tips that I know that I have learned over the years about speaker placement. And I decided to go ahead and brand this one. It is called LOTS, which stands for Loudspeaker Optimization Techniques for Sound Staging. A lot of hard work and passion has gone into this video and we are gonna have a lot of fun. But before we do, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Safe and Sound. For today's speaker setup tutorial, the one thing we obviously need is a great pair of loudspeakers. Our show sponsor, Safe and Sound, has a wide variety of bookshelf and floor standing speakers for every budget. They even offer fantastic financing options if that's what you need to take the plunge. That's right, starting with 0% financing, you will be able to play now and pay over time. So what the heck are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description below and build your dream system today. So yeah, Safe and Sound, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. I certainly do appreciate it. And guys, make sure you bookmark the links provided down below in the description box and let's go ahead and get started. Oh, one more thing before we go. I do encourage you to watch the entire video all the way through. I don't want you to miss anything that is really important, but if you do wanna skip ahead or reference something in the future, I do have all of the timestamps for every single step down below, as well as my left hand shoulder over here. Number one, soundstage. What is soundstage? That my friends is a great question and I'm gonna answer it in the listening room. Let's go. All right, folks, before we define soundstage, let's tackle the immediate issue. No, there is nothing wrong with your phone, laptop, or TV settings. I need to give a visual example of the difference between what most end up doing for speaker placement versus the results of placement you are about to achieve after using lots. So yeah, this, well, this looks awful. But ask yourself, why? Why does this look awful? Well, for one, it looks flat, washed out, and there is little to no contrast. It's hard to see any clear details and it's nearly impossible to see into the shadows. The reality is, if you are setting up your loudspeakers like most of the manufacturers tell you, this is a visual representation of what you are most likely hearing and the sad part is, you might not even know it. What if I told you there is a different way and a path you are about to take that leads to something that looks more like this? Now we have something we can chat about. What was flat is now three-dimensional. What was washed out now has vibrancy and life. What was no contrast is now a clear separation from light to dark with every shade in between. That's right, folks. This is the reason for lots. And to define soundstage, it's really quite simple. Soundstage is the great exchange of hearing two speakers in a room for a performance that has width, depth, layering, separation, spatial cues, and so much more. And now that I have your attention, let's move on with the tutorial. Number two, what are the tools that we need in order to perform LOTS or loudspeaker optimization techniques for sound staging? It's a pretty short list and it's certainly not expensive or hard to find. Let me show you. I would say that for starters, a pad of paper is certainly gonna come in handy and a pen or a pencil, so far so good. If you have a smartphone, tablet, smart device, you name it, one of these guys will certainly come in handy. It's not required, but it certainly is helpful with asking Siri questions when we get to the math. And that reminds me, if you don't have a smartphone, then grab a calculator. If you're old school, we need a way to measure, and a tape measure will certainly work. Now, if you want something that's gonna be a little bit cooler than that, say hello to my little friend, an electronic tape measure, which doubles as a laser. Now, depending on how heavy your loudspeakers are, I would recommend grabbing some of these. These are magic moving sliders, and if you suffer from noodle armatitis like I do, it makes the job a lot easier to manage. So, grab some of these, you're gonna need them. Masking tape. Make sure you get masking tape. Painter's tape, it's just not quite sticky enough for this particular job, so yeah, get plenty of it. 
Okay, maybe three rolls was overkill. So yeah, like I was saying, short list, not a lot of crazy items here on the table, that's for darn sure. This would be the most expensive item if you decide to buy one. I'll have links provided down below, but make no mistake, my friends, a tape measure will certainly work. Step three, some simple math. And don't panic, really simple math. I'm gonna be having Siri help me along the way, but if you don't have a smartphone, now is a good time to grab the calculator. The first thing that we need to know is how wide is your listening room? I completely understand. Every listening room is different. Some of you don't have a wall to the left or a wall to the right. Be creative. What we're looking for is what is the total width of your listening space? Now in my case, my listening room is 16 feet, three inches wide. So here's the simple math that we need to know. Hey Siri, what is 16.3 divided by four? 16.3 divided by four is 4.075. Let's go ahead and call that four feet. Write that down. Well, write down the number for you. Don't write down my number, that would be crazy. All right, so for my listening room, 16.3 divided by four, we're gonna call it four feet. So far, so good. The next thing we need to know is this. Hey Siri, what is 16.3 divided by three? 16.3 divided by three is about 5.4333. Okay, perfect. So five feet, four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. All right, so we have our first two numbers. We only need one more thing, and then we're done with the math. I told you, it's not gonna be that hard. All right, and the last piece of information that we need to know is going to be based on the length or the depth of your listening room. So we're talking about from the back wall to the front wall. And again, some of you will need to be creative, do the best you can. In my example, my listening room is 22 feet from the back wall to the front wall. I'm gonna ask Siri to help me out and show you how simple this is. Hey Siri, what is 22 divided by three? 22 divided by three is about 7.3333. Let's call that seven feet, three inches. And guess what? That is all the math that we need to get started with lots. Number four, laying down the tracks. That's right. This step is where we get to work or in my case, have a lot of fun. I'm gonna have the kids help me. I'll see you guys out in the listening room. Starting from the front wall, measuring from the left side, lay down some strips for markers based on the first numbers we wrote down where we calculated the room width divided by four. In my room, this was four feet. Just follow my lead on how I lay down the strips and this step will make more sense in just a moment. Now that we have some strips down, we lay down our first long strip, starting from the front of the listening room all the way to the back. Use the strips to help guide you and keep that long strip as straight as you can. When you're done, it should look something like this. Next, again measuring from the left wall. Lay down some more strips based on the second numbers where we measured the room width divided by three. In my room, this was five feet, four inches. As you might have guessed, just like before, repeat the steps of laying down the second long strip from the front of the listening room all the way to the back. At this point, we have two long tape lines on the left-hand side of the listening room. If yours looks something like this, you are doing great. Now, starting again at the front wall, we are going to lay strips down every 12 inches, creating some sections between our longer strips. And when you are done, you should have something that looks like a long train track on the left-hand side of your listening room. Starting again at the front wall, measuring from the right side, lay down some strips for markers based on the first numbers we wrote down where we calculated the room width divided by four. In my case, this was four feet. And again, just follow my lead on how I do the strips and you will be fine. Now that we have some strips down, we can easily lay down a long strip using these as guides, starting from the front of the listening room all the way to the back. When you are done, it should look something like this. Next, again measuring from the right wall, lay down more strips based on the second numbers where we measured the room width divided by three. In my case, this was five feet, four inches. And just like before, repeat the steps of laying down the second track from the front of the listening room all the way to the back. If yours looks something like this, you're doing great. Now, 
Starting again at the front wall, we are going to lay down strips every 12 inches, creating some sections between the longer strips on the right side. When you are done, you should have something that looks like this. Two long train tracks running right through your listening room. All right, folks, for the last step, we are going to tackle the listening position. Measuring from the back wall towards the listening room, lay down some strips based on the last numbers where we measured the room depth or length divided by three. In my room, this was seven feet, three inches. Next, starting from either track, lay down one long strip of tape all the way from one track to the other, using your markers to help keep things lined up. When completed, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, this strip is going to be where I think you should consider placing your couch or your listening chair. If you cannot place furniture in this location, you can sometimes get away with moving things forward or backwards, but if possible, stay as close to this location as you can. Step five, starting position and why. Hear me out, folks. We're going to place our speakers to the left of us and to the right. Try to bring them as forward on the tracks as possible. When I look to the left, I want to be looking at the side of the speaker if I can. Obviously, the couch might get in the way, so as close as you possibly can, and same thing with the right speaker. And that might seem totally wrong and totally crazy, and it is, but it's intentional. I can promise you this. The number one mistake, in my opinion, that speaker tutorials get wrong every single time is starting with the speakers on the front wall. And had you started on the front wall, you're gonna stop long before the magic actually starts. Number six, and now we listen. And in order to listen, we need music. Now, over the years, as I have perfected this technique, I've had a lot of folks ask me, what kind of music should I use? And that's a great question. My answer is always the same. Something that you are familiar with, something that you love, something that you enjoy listening to, and you have heard that track a million times over and over and over again. That is going to be a great pick, but I will say this as one small disclaimer. I would avoid something with one singer and nothing more than just one singer. We're looking for soundstage, and in order for that to happen, we need a couple of things going on in the mix. So, acapella, probably not gonna be the best choice of all. Now, in the past, when I have talked about this setup tutorial, I mentioned you might wanna try this with the lights off. And I still recommend that. There are a lot of folks out there that would say, that's crazy, why don't I just close my eyes? And you can certainly do that. But here's the deal. I've tried both, and maybe this is just the way people are wired or some people are wired. If I turn the lights off, I actually have better results with my eyes open, looking into the dark, trying to figure out where things are localized in the sound stage versus just simply closing my eyes and trying to figure it out. Your results might vary. It's just a tip, lights on or off, eyes closed, eyes open. I really think that you should consider not being able to see the speakers in this particular tutorial. I think that you will have better results, but whatever floats your boat, man, that's what my wife would say. Number seven, one foot forward. That's right, folks. We have our speakers lined up to the left and to the right of us. It looks very strange, and you're going to now play your track, listen to it, and think it through. What does this actually sound like? Not very good, for sure. We all agree there. So what I want you to do is go ahead and start moving your speaker one foot forward at a time. Make sure you do not speed ahead because I need you to understand you're listening for why it sounds wrong before you can understand why it sounds right. As of right now, your brain is telling you there's something over here and there's something over here and it certainly doesn't sound right. If you stick with it and you move the speakers back one foot at a time, there will be a tipping point and you will know it. It will not be mistaken for anything else but magic. Those speakers are going to completely and totally vanish. You will have no idea that there are two speakers playing back music in your room and what will be exchanged in this great exchange is a performance. You will have localization of the singer, of the instruments based on the music that you picked. And guess what, my friends? You are now experiencing something that took me years to learn. 
and when I learned it, I can't go back. This for me is the summit. It is the pinnacle. It is the advent. It is as good as it's ever going to get without having to upgrade anything in your system at all. And I'll tell you something else. A lot of the guys that have their speakers slammed up against the wall, they can spend tens of thousands. They could spend a million dollars on that system. And I can promise you this, you have better sound than they do based on this simple setup technique that you just mastered. Number eight, horizontal movements. Now up to this point, you've probably wondered, Ron, we lay down these tracks, we have these one foot increments, but why do we have the two tracks? And what does that actually mean? Why was it important to figure out that math? Well, you're about to find out. Once you have soundstage going on in the listening room and you're thinking, oh my goodness sakes, this is as good as it's gonna get. Well, let me tell you, now it's time to spice up this dish however you wanna spice it up. So starting with the speakers right in the middle of the tracks, go ahead and now try moving them to the inside of the tracks where the tape is laid out. Give it another listen and then also try moving them to the outside of the tracks. Don't go too far past the tape. Those lines are there for a reason, so go ahead and try it and let me know what you hear. So did you hear it? As you move the speakers closer together, mid bass has a little bit more heft and weight. Vocals seem to have a little bit more meat on the bones. As you move the speakers further away from each other, you sacrifice some of that, but now your sound stage gets a little bit wider. Like I said before, either way you do this, you win. You get to flavor your own dish and do what you think sounds best. Number nine, toe in for final voicing. Now up until this point, we have only had the speakers face forward and now is the time to start towing them in. How much you tow in your speakers? It's the same thing as horizontal movement. Now we're just spicing the dish to your liking. So don't be afraid to experiment. My favorite starting point is at my shoulders, just on the outside of my shoulders. And then I will move in from there until I'm basically looking right at the speakers, straight on, see what you like. Things to look out for is when do things start to sound a little bit bright, a little bit shouty? If that ends up being the case, pull them further away from you. In other words, right now, this is pretty much a tone control. We are adjusting the amount of top end and clarity that you're actually hearing from the loudspeakers. Number 10, tilt adjustment if it's needed, and a lot of this is gonna be based on, do you have spikes for your loudspeakers? Are you using some kind of an isolation device for your loudspeaker? Now is the time to go ahead and get those things installed and you're essentially determining, I guess you could say the rake angle of the speakers, how far back they're going to be tilted. And again, every single loudspeaker out there is different. You might not even be able to do any kind of a tilt on the loudspeaker and that's perfectly fine. If you can make those adjustments, now would be the time to do so. And guess what? You're done. Your life has now changed. After all of these years here with New Record Day, I have spent endless hours working and tweaking and trying this out in different listening rooms, whether they're friends, whether they're my house. And I am happy to share all of these secrets with you. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And thank you so much for attending today's LOTS, which is again, loudspeaker optimization techniques for soundstage. Oh, and one more thing, think about now, all of these folks that are spending all this money on all these speakers and gear, and you'll see it all the time, the speakers are slammed up against the wall. <laughs> We can all laugh at them, all of us, because we now know better and it didn't cost us anything. Now, then again, I guess those magic moving sliders, those were three bucks. So that was a bit of an investment and masking tape. I guess we didn't need three rolls after all. So, okay, you got me. It wasn't free, but it was darn close. I'll see you guys in the next video.